The 39ers are a notorious street crew comprised of dudes from the Upper Ninth Ward, G Strip, Gallier Street, Entry, and G. A notorious Central City crew named for its stronghold around the 3rd and Galvey Street neighborhood. Several of the alleged members were also hailed from the Florida Projects. The crews would combine forces to press for control of the dog food trade, often through smashing their ops. Those ops would be Ride or Die from the 8th Ward, as well as dudes out the Yo and the D. The crew would be held accountable for the double crushing that took place in 2010 in the New Orleans East. Jerome, Mam and Hampton, and Renetta Lowe, a.k.a. Magnolia Shorty. However, one man would wreak havoc on Gregory Rapper Stewart in the G-Strip. That man would be Lloyd Slugger Curry. This is the story of what actually happened to Lloyd Slugger Curry. As a teen, the young Gregory Rapper Stewart would meet Lloyd Curry, a.k.a. Slugger, through Daryl Franklin, a.k.a. Breezy. Taking advantage of Rabbit's childlike appearance, Breezy and Slugger would gas Rabbit to ride the Greyhounds to cop the work from Texas. Slugger would eventually end up catching a charge and doing a bid. Breezy, who had given his word to Joe Slugger, went with the move and backdoored on him. Upon Slugger's relief, the beef would be on. Rabbit, Breezy, and the whole G-Strip would eventually go down with the multi-count 39ers indictment. On the stand, Gregor Rebbe Stewart would make a failed attempt at dragging Slugger into the 39ers case. These are the events that would take place leading to the capture and arrest of Lloyd Ellis Curry, a.k.a. Slugger. David W. Welker, special agent in charge of the New Orleans Division of the FBI, would announce the arrest of two individuals. Members of the FBI's New Orleans Violent Crime Task Force and the New Orleans Gang Task Force arrested Van Champagne of New Orleans pursuant to a state warrant for possession with intent to distribute that dog food. The arrest was subsequent to a traffic stop at approximately 11.15 p.m. in the 400 block of Veterans Highway in Metairie. At approximately 10.15 p.m. that same night, Lloyd Ellis Curry, a.k.a. Slugger of New Orleans, was arrested by members of the NOVCTF in the 100 block of Carondelet Street in New Orleans, pursuant to a federal warrant charging him with three counts of distribution and possession with intent to distribute at 11.5. The NOVCTF is comprised of members of the New Orleans Police Department, Jefferson Parish Sheriff's Office, St. Bernard Parish Sheriff's Office, Kenner Police Department, DEA, ATF, Louisiana State Police, the United States Marshal, and the FBI. I. According to undercover FBI agents, Slugger sold 1.2 G's of 11.5 for 200 to an FBI informant in the parking lot of an auto parts store in Old Utility Road in New Orleans East on September 10th of 2009. Special agents for the FBI Violent Crime Task Force would conduct surveillance and witness the illegal transaction on September 18th of 2009 while inside his whip at a McDonald's parking lot on the I-10 Service Road in New Orleans East. Slugger would again sell 3.3 G's of 11.5 to an FBI informant for 500 bucks. The transaction would be successfully captured through a hidden recording device. On October the 2nd of 2009, uh, inside an apartment at the Berkeley Apartment Complex in Slidell, Louisiana, Slugger would sell 2.3 G's of 11.5 to an FBI informant for $400. This transaction would also be captured through a hidden recording device. FBI agents would ultimately arrest Slugger at a bar on Carondelet Street shortly thereafter. Upon conducting a search of Slugger's whip, agents would discover two loaded Glock 40s. As a three-time loser, Slugger was precluded from owning or possessing any blickies. The whip would also allegedly contain several personal items further linking Slugger to the whip. These items would include a offender's registry form with Slugger's name on it, a utility bill with Slugger's name on it, and a bank record belonging to Slugger. Due to his extensive prior criminal record, Slugger would be designated as an armed carrier offender in accordance with federal sentencing guidelines. Slugger's prior criminal record, coupled with the nature of the firearms possessed, served as the basis for the 28-year sentence. Slugger would be convicted and sentenced by U.S. District Judge Sarah S. Vance to 28 years in prison for illegally possessing blicks and distribution of their dog food in New Orleans. 
In addition to the term of imprisonment, Judge Vance would order that Slugger be placed on six years of supervised release following the term of imprisonment, during which that time the defendant will be under federal supervision and risk an additional term of imprisonment should he violate any terms of his supervised release. This was the story of what really happened to Lloyd Slugger Curry. The Desire Housing Project, a handled managed property located in the Upper Ninth Ward, would be deemed as one of the most crucial projects in the city. The build of the Desire was authorized by the Housing Act of 1949. Construction of the Desire Project will begin in 1949 and be completed by 1956. Cut off from the rest of the city, the Industrial Canal, Florida Canal, and railroad tracks on all four sides, the D contained 262 two-story buildings featuring 1,860 apartments, making it, at the time, one of the largest housing projects in the country. By the 1960s, the Desire Project housed more than 13,000 residents on a part of land slightly less than 100 acres in actual size, making it the area with the greatest population density in New Orleans. Two elementary schools, Houghton and Lockett, were included in the construction of the Desire Housing Projects. Many of those moved into the housing projects have been displaced by urban renewal projects elsewhere in the city. Situated on swampland that had formerly been the site of a landfill, the Desire Project buildings were poorly constructed using wood and brick veneer to cut costs and will fall into despair within a few years of occupancy. Funding derived from Lyndon Johnson's War on Poverty programs helped bring in a new community center, Pool daycare center and health clinic. September of 1965, Hurricane Betsy swept through New Orleans. The bottom floor apartments within the Desire Housing Projects were inundated with flood water. Wind and water damage destroyed trees and shrubs throughout the project. Little was done by Hano to repair the damage caused by the hurricane. In 1970, the New Orleans Committee to Combat Fascism, the NCCF, a Black Panther shoot-off, not the actual group as most of you uneducated commenters on history like to believe, moved to the Desire Project and began organizing within the community, implementing their free breakfast program as well as other initiatives. Unbeknownst to many, Brother Malik Rahim was one of the early leaders who formed the actual New Orleans Black Panther chapter. The NOPD would engage in two shootouts with the NCCF in an effort to purge the group from the neighborhood. Members of the group would later be arrested. In 1971, Hano planned to modernize the D but the plans were originally deemed too costly. In 1975, Hano would use funds from the Department of Housing and Urban Development to perform deferred maintenance and other improvements. Over the 1970s and 1980s, the desire would undergo a steady outward migration of residents. Ongoing deterioration of the buildings as well as a steady increase in crime will contribute to the outflow. Historically, the desire was known as the city's most dangerous project and would be documented as being one of the deadliest communities in the country. Starting in the late 1960s, most of the crime would be from residents having few economic opportunities and thus fighting for income made available by the 11-5 trade. When that hard arrived in the mid-80s, crime rate in the D would increase even further as crime would infest the project. Residents will begin moving out to flee the physical and social decay. Abandoned apartments will provide convenient places to stash. Deals and crushings will become commonplace in the D. The alleys and courtyards in the D will become a place where former residents will claim that life was often considered worth less than a pair of new tenants. The upstick and deletions will give the D a reputation for violence along with the nearby Florida, aka the Florida projects. If you know you know this all being during a time that the lesions were so bad in the NO that the NOPD would celebrate 350 crushings compared to 413 crushings a year before, which was a mere 15 percent, not even enough to put a dent in the crushings. The crime rate in the D would be 300 percent above the entire nation. The 9.5 acres of land encompassed by the D has many stories. One of those stories would be that of Lynn Davis, the Hardy Boys, and Kim Groves. A lot of notorious street figures would hail from the D. Alter, Poolman, Sterling, Lloyds, Lugger, Curry, Freddie Smooth, Sean Howard, and Red Trammell just to name a few. In February of 95, the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development would approve a HOPE grant for Hano to improve the living environment through rehabilitation of the project. As demolition would begin in 1997, the project would be completely raised by 1999. The deed was seen to have taken on a new outlook 
Before a crime could slow down, a residence could fully settle in. Hurricane Katrina would destroy the 318 rental units that were being constructed, as well as 107 rental units that had just been finished and occupied.